first familiarize yourself. Look at the detailed computer-generated installation plan to see where all elements should be positioned. Mark the position of the thermostat approximately 1.5 meters above the subfloor, protected from direct sunlight and drafts. Drill a 65 mm hole in the wall to mount a standard wall socket for the thermostat. Drill two holes under the thermostat as close as possible to the concrete subfloor. Insert conduits from these holes to the place where the thermostat will be. For concrete walls, use a circular saw to chase a channel into the wall and then remove the concrete in between with a chisel to run the conduits through it. Clean the subfloor with a vacuum cleaner. Make sure every piece of dust is gone. Apply a layer of primer onto the subfloor. We recommend the T2 Reflector P-Fix Primer. Carefully attach an elastic joint or seal to the wall around the heated area. This will serve as an expansion joint. Also plan for joints between separately operated heating circuits and adjoining unheated areas. Mark the heating cable runs on the subfloor with a thick marker. Make sure you mark the correct cable spacing and direction. This will be essential for a perfect installation. Run the conduits through the wall socket and mount it in the wall. Slide the floor sensor through the conduit. Don't forget to install the end cap. Glue the conduit of the sensor on the subfloor between two cable runs. Perform this in a straight line, as long as the conduit, or use 3 to 5 cm long glue dots. Perform an insulation resistance test with a minimum test voltage of 500 volts. We recommend a test voltage of 2,500 volts. The result should be greater than 100 mega ohm. Fill in the test result on the commissioning form. Slide one end of the heating cable through the vertical conduit towards the thermostat. Prepare the cabling for the connection kit. Remove about 120 millimeters of the cable's end outer jacket. Then loosen and twist the braid. Take your time to do this carefully.
Remove 110 mm of the inner jacket. Slide the small heat shrink sleeves on both conductors and the braid. Use a heat gun to keep the heat shrink sleeves in place. Install the big heat shrink sleeve and use the heat gun to keep it in place. Then squeeze it gently between the conductors with the pliers. Put everything back into the wall socket. Put several glue dots on the subfloor with a glue gun and attach the heating cable on the glue dots. Add more dots to keep the cable better in place. Make a turn and continue the second run. When installing floor heating cables around an obstacle like a toilet or sink, the cable can be spaced more closely without the risk of overheating. Continue installing the heating cable till the end. Make sure the cable end is not in a walk-in shower and at least 30 centimeters away from a drain. This will avoid the drainage pipe from drying out and producing unwanted odors. Cut off the heating cable to install the end seal. Remove about 40 millimeters of the cable's end outer jacket. Push back the braid and cut 25 millimeters of the cable's end. Position the heat shrink sleeve half over the edge of the cable. Use the heat gun to shrink it. Then use the pliers to gently squeeze the shrink sleeve on the cable and seal the cable's end. Push the braid back over the shrunk sleeve. Shrink the end cap with the heat gun. Glue the end of the cable to the floor with the glue gun. Looks nice, doesn't it? Oh, don't forget to perform another insulation resistance test and record the test result on the commissioning form. Install the thermostat. Switch on the power once the thermostat has been installed. Keep windows and doors closed and measure the current after 15 minutes. The heating cable may not be covered during the measurement. Record the test result on the commissioning form. You should expect a current of approximately 37 milliamps per meter.